You have to eliminate all cooked foods. Great, sign me up. Comment below if you've also been personally victimized by the raw movement. Imagine being fruitarian. This dish alone is a reason to never be raw vegan. Hi guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. Today you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna eat together and we're gonna chat. So if that is your thing, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thumbs up this video. So guys, today I am so excited because we have a very delicious feast in front of me, as you can see here. I made myself a sushi bake. We are having a vegan sushi bake. So this is the sushi bake that I made. I made a vegan sushi bake and I have posted the recipe video already. It is there, so definitely check out the recipe. It's so good. The recipe will be linked below. You guys have to make it. It is absolutely divine. I'm obsessed. And then on the side, because I love me some variety, I also have some fresh spring rolls. I just made some cute little salad rolls, which I thought would be good to eat with this delicious Feast. I also have some seaweed because you got to eat the sushi bake with the seaweed. I have some cucumbers here. I got some sparkling water and can't wait to dig in. First, let's do a bite. So you want to get a good bite here. Mm -hmm. Then you take a nori sheet and you're going to put it in here. Ooh, and then we eat. <laughs> Cheers, first bite. Mm. Mm. You gotta eat this. I feel like even if you're not vegan, you would love this, okay? Mm. So, bit of that. Cucumber, cheers. Okay, now I'm gonna take a salad roll and I have some sweet chili sauce that I'm gonna dip it in. Mmm. So good, you guys. Anyway, hello. How are you guys doing? We are back with a mukbang. I don't know when this is gonna be posted because I have to post this recipe first. So we'll see. It might be about a couple weeks after <laughs> I actually film it, but hope you guys are doing well. I've been trying to be consistent. It's hard because I'm traveling again in um, literally less than a week. I'm going to Thailand and Bali with some of you guys, which is so exciting. And so I'll be gone for about three weeks. So I'm doing like a week in Thailand. And my friend Daniel's coming with me. It's gonna be so fun. And it's gonna be with an amazing group, I'm, I'm assuming. And we're gonna spend a week together in Thailand doing a vegan food tour. And then I have a few days in between Thailand and Bali. Me and Daniel, we're gonna chill. And then we're gonna go to Bali. And then that's gonna be another group. And we're spending a week in Bali with another group. Again, another vegan food tour. So very, very exciting. And speaking of which, I actually have another trip coming up. Uh, the next trip I'm doing is Costa Rica. And that's happening in... January and uh, again Daniel is coming along with me for this trip as well. So we're super excited It's gonna be so so fun. I've never been to Costa Rica. I've heard amazing things. I cannot wait It's gonna be so exciting. So again link is below sign up come with us. It's gonna be so fun. Cheers mm. Mm. It is so good. You guys, I don't know when this is going to be posted, but today I have been, you know, posting some controversial things on Instagram. So I thought I'd talk to you guys about it because I have some strong opinions. <laughs> Believe it or not, I had some strong opinions. I've been told so many times I have such strong opinions. I'm like, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no denying it. All right. So we got nori, we got cucumber, we got sushi bake, we got everything in here. Cheers. Mm. So, 
basically i'm sure you guys know my opinion if you guys like watch my videos for some time but so today i i think it was today or yesterday i saw a story about a young woman i believe she's like early 30s i think who unfortunately followed a raw diet and recently passed away now they haven't fully clarified the reasons for her passing away but all the articles I've seen are saying that she died of malnutrition and starvation. And you can see by her photos that it's it's very clear she is very, very, very thin. So of course, all the headlines are saying raw vegan dies of starvation, dies of malnutrition. First thing that I think is very important is that I really, 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 really wish we would stop calling this way of life raw vegan, okay? Call it raw foodist, raw diet. I really hate the term vegan being in there because it is so easy for the media to take that and run with it and basically say vegan diets are dangerous, okay? A lot of people that are not in this movement cannot distinguish the difference between vegan and raw vegan, which is why we should just eliminate the term raw vegan and just use the term raw foodist or raw diet, things like that. Don't get me wrong, I still sometimes accidentally say raw vegan. I really try not to. This is something I work on. I try not to say raw vegan because again, I just don't believe it is remotely representative of veganism as a whole, okay? It is not at all. It is so different, okay? In my opinion, see, I, I gotta put this down. In my opinion, a raw diet and veganism have basically very little in common, okay? Yes, it's under the same umbrella, technically, as in you're not eating animal products, but a raw plant-based diet and a person following a balanced whole foods plant-based diet could not look more different. My diet is very, very, very different from any sort of raw plant-based diet, any sort of like fruitarian diet. It's almost like comparing an omnivorous diet that has a bit of meat, but also lots of plant foods to a carnivorous diet. It's like comparing those two things because they all fall under the umbrella of eating meat. Are we gonna compare those two things and act like they are the same thing? They are not the same thing. So we need to stop using the term raw vegan. I strongly believe this, okay? So that's one of my first points is, you know, let's not do this. But one of my main points, this was my controversial thing that some people are not agreeing with, which is fine, but I really feel like raw diets are dangerous and pushing any sort of raw, raw food diet is a recipe for potential disaster, okay? And it attracts people that have ED tendencies, okay? Especially the raw food movement attracts people with ED tendencies and makes those tendencies worse. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm. It's so good. And I think it's important to have these discussions. I'm not necessarily speaking about this specific person, but we are seeing patterns like this, okay? We have seen this before. We've seen people that follow an extreme plant-based diet. Fortunately, not all of them pass away, but we have seen some very, very severe cases of people following a very extreme raw plant-based diet and getting super, super sick. And it's not something we should be ignoring and it's not something that we should just stay away from in terms of discussing because I think it's important, especially since it is associated with veganism, okay? And it's obviously very, very dangerous, potentially for a lot of people. Now, I'm not saying that because you're a raw foodist, you're immediately gonna be sick and that there's no way of succeeding in a raw food diet long-term. Of course, I've seen people that seemingly are successful on a raw food diet, although, you know, I would argue also like, are they really, like, do we know these numbers? Like, do we know for sure? We don't know for sure, okay? I will say, like, I don't think it's impossible to sustain a raw food diet long term. I think it is potentially possible. However, it is unnecessary to follow a raw diet long term, right? There's no reason to avoid cooked food. There is no scientific back reason. There's no nutritionally adequate reason to avoid cooked food completely unless for some reason you have some sort of extreme uh, dietary requirements, unless you have some sort of extreme chronic illness, disease, something like that. Unless there is something like that, there is no reason for you to avoid cooked food completely other than to be restrictive and follow internet guru's advice.
I will say I probably should have cut the vegetables a little bit smaller. There's a lot. Anyway, so obviously I'm not against eating lots of raw fruits and vegetables. This is raw in here. That's raw. Okay. But I am against eliminating such a large percentage of different types of foods for no reason at all. <laughs> I'm just glad that we are out of that era on YouTube, that raw vegan era. You guys all remember. That was a dark time of YouTube, okay? Where so many of us, including myself, somehow believed that this way of eating was the healthiest way, okay? There are so many problems with this. Again, I think it can be potentially healthy for a small group of people that are willing and able to sustain this sort of diet long term and, you know, not have issues. But I think it takes a lot of not only discipline, but a lot of privilege, a lot of money, a lot of effort to sustain this diet long-term and be successful. Not only that, what really gets me about this raw movement and the people within it is that so many of these people, I would say the great majority of these people, speak with such authority on a topic that they don't know anything about, which is nutrition. Now, I'm not saying that I know things about nutrition. I'll be the first to say that I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian. But if you look at what dietitians say, and if you look at the evidence, there is no evidence to say that cooked food is bad. There's no evidence to say that you should avoid cooked food. In fact, there's a lot of evidence to say the contrary, that certain foods especially are better cooked. Certain foods you can't even eat raw, like rice, for example. Rice is healthy. Rice, you have to cook it basically to eat it. And beans, for example, have been proven to be very, very healthy. That also needs to be cooked. There are certain vegetables that become healthier once cooked. And of course there are vegetables and fruits that are healthier when raw. But again, no reason to avoid cooked food. But so many of these raw food people talk with such authority as if they know what the fuck they're talking about, which they don't, let's be honest, okay? And this was exactly the case back in like, what, 2015, 2014, when the raw movement was very, very big on YouTube and so many people would talk with such authority about pseudoscience. This is the issue. So a few issues with the raw movement. Number one, it's not based on any science. It's based on absolute garbage. It's based on absolutely no reason whatsoever. And it's under this guise of health. It's under this illusion of extreme health. So not only is it, in my opinion, unhealthy for the majority of people to avoid so many different types of food groups, you're now basically saying this is the healthiest way of living. Uh, when there's no reason to avoid cooked food for the majority of people, there's no reason, why do these people talk with such authority as if they know what the fuck they're talking about? And then because they talk with such authority and they, you know, maybe they're thin, maybe they look decent, you know, maybe all of a sudden people start to follow them and people start to think, oh yeah, I think I want to eat like this. And then especially those people that are already potentially suffering from an ED or ED like tendencies, those people are gonna be so attracted to that sort of messaging, right? Like this is a vibrant way of living, this is healthy, this is great, it's fantastic. You have to eliminate all cooked foods. Great, sign me up. So yes, I think it's dangerous for so many reasons, um, mainly because it promotes extreme restriction for absolutely no reason. Ooh. salad roll. So anyways, basically I'm very anti raw food diets and I think we should stop calling it raw veganism. Like, do you guys remember back in the day? Okay. Again, raw vegan YouTube, the height of raw vegan YouTube. There were so many of these raw vegans, which by the way, the majority, the great majority of them have quit veganism. Okay. So again, another piece of evidence that you know, this is not sustainable. And a lot of them had a lot of issues. A lot of them cited health reasons for quitting a plant-based diet. And again, if they didn't follow such a restrictive way of eating, maybe they wouldn't have those health issues. Cheers.
And I just remember at that time, somehow we were all drinking the Daterade, okay? We were all just mesmerized by this raw movement, okay? Comment below if you've also been personally victimized by the raw movement, okay? Okay, let's get a big bite here. So anyway, I remember at this time, there were at least a few of these, you know, raw plant-based YouTubers that were basically saying that it is completely normal to lose your period as a woman. If you follow a raw diet, it's completely normal to lose your period for years. This was normalized in this movement. And you, you ask me why I'm against it. You ask me why I think it's a cult. You ask me why I think it's pseudoscience, it's BS. When there are, and I think this was one of the first signs where I was like, ooh, that's a bit wrong. <laughs> and you know what also kills me about this sort of, you know, raw movement and the things that they say? They make it seem like it's so abundant and it's not restrictive just because they are not necessarily restricting the amount that they're eating. They think it's not restrictive. Um, excuse me, sorry. No, try again. Just because you are not restricting the amount and the quantity that you're eating, but you are eliminating like 95% of other foods, that does not mean that that is not restrictive, okay? Just because I can eat an unlimited amount of lettuce does not mean that that's not restrictive. Like imagine if I was like, I eat only lettuce, but I eat as much as I want. Would you say that's not restrictive? Obviously I know that the raw diet isn't just eating lettuce, but you know, they also push a lot of these mono meals. You guys remember mono meals? Oh my god, I I was fully like watching this stuff. <laughs> Thankfully, I never had the uh what's the word? motivation to go raw, but I was like, "Oh my god, these people are healthy." No, they're not healthy, okay? Well, they they might be somewhat, okay, but you know, I think generally they're not healthy. What was I saying? 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 See, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> what was I saying? Hmm. Oh yeah, they would do these things called mono meals, okay? That's a big thing in the raw movement, in the fruitarian movement specifically. They like do an entire meal of just mangoes and then an entire meal of just dragon fruit and then an entire meal of bananas, which is fine I feel like once in a while, but when you're already eating very, very limited amounts of food and the majority of what you eat is like 10 different types of foods and then you have one meal that's just one type of fruit it's like you know that you know it, it's a bit of a red flag and then the problem is is that i believe and i think there is some evidence to back this up and again i'm not a dietitian i'm not a nutritionist but i think that there is something to say about eating a wide variety of foods when you eat a wide variety of foods that a will allow you to have a wide variety of vitamins and minerals and nutrients and also it really helps diversify that microbiome that gut microbiome which a lot of these raw foodists after they do it long term and they have these health problems once they start introducing cooked food the shit hits the fan shit hits the fan quite possibly literally <laughs> because their bodies are used to eating mangoes and bananas and dragon fruit all of a sudden they introduce like bowl of beans and then all hell breaks loose, okay? All hell breaks loose. They eat a sweet potato and, and then they fucking go into a coma. That is not a sign of health, okay? That's not a sign of health if, you know, your body goes into a full-on panic attack because you ate a bean, like, you know? And do you guys remember Banana Island? Do you remember that? Banana Island? I was like, is this some sort of tropical place? No, it just means you eat bananas and bananas alone for like a week or however long. Are you, and you're telling me these people do not promote restrictive way of eating? Now, I don't know if that's still a thing, but that was definitely a thing back in the day. Ah, this is breaking. Yummy. Mm. 
By the way, guys, I made this in my pottery class. Isn't it cute? <laughs> Just wanted to show off. Anyway. So, needless to say, I'm very anti the raw food movement for so many reasons. Even if you were to tell me that there are healthy people that have been doing it long term, I still can't get by it because you're still promoting extreme re restriction for no reason. Now, if you follow it and you know you think you're great and you're doing fine, fantastic. But I think it's very, very dangerous to promote this to other people, especially when so many people that are attracted to this already have orthorexic tendencies. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So anyways, um, the thing is, I, I laugh about this and we're joking about this, but like obviously this is a very serious issue and a lot of people have so many issues after they follow this way of eating. So anyway, this is why I talk against the raw diet so much and why I'm so against, you know, the promotion of this way of eating because, because of all those reasons I just listed. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Hmm. Not to mention... I think the one thing that people constantly forget is the importance of not just what you put in your body in terms of food, but so many different factors that affect your overall health. The problem is that it's not just about nutrition. It's not just about the food you're putting into your body, okay? Physical health is so many factors, nutrition, there's exercise, sleep, stress, sunlight, exposure, all these things. So there's that, but that's just physical health. Now what about mental health, social health, the quality of your relationships, how you feel as a social being? This is crucial to your health. Now, what is more socially isolating than following a fully raw fruitarian diet? I can't think of anything worse. Cheers. Can you think of anything more socially isolating? Imagine being fruitarian. I think this is one of the reasons, even though for a while I was like, ooh, maybe I'll try raw till four. Maybe I'll try raw diet. I think one key reason I never did it is the social aspect. Never mind, I don't live in a jungle. Never mind, I don't live in Thailand. Never mind, I don't live. Guys, there is some level of construction going on downstairs, which is pissing me off <laughs> because this construction, guys, it is so sporadic. Like, it is so random. It will go on all day, but then there'll be like an hour of no sound. And all of a sudden it'll be like, dah, dah, and it'll be quiet for another like 10 minutes. And then it'll go again. Nah, nah. Anyway, regardless, let me try to get through this video. Hopefully I won't get too pissed off. What was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah. So I think the social aspect is something that I could not get by because imagine being raw vegan. First of all, especially if you're fruitarian, you have to eat a huge quantity of fruit, even just to meat. A caloric requirements and even feel full probably okay it's already hard enough sometimes as a vegan right that's one of the main key questions a lot of people ask me when i do a q a everyone's like oh how do you navigate social situations as a vegan how do you do this as a vegan how do you like go to a dinner and like not be awkward blah, blah, blah. so i get so many questions like that but imagine adding the element of raw in there <laughs> that amount of social isolation again unless you live in a tropical forest somewhere, or a, a raw vegan compound, a raw vegan uh, collective, whatever, you will be socially isolated. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's so good, you guys. <laughs> it is so good. So that's one thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration. And also the fact that, for example, we all live in different climates. You know, we don't all live next to a durian tree, okay? 
these people are just so out of touch sometimes. I've seen one like really big famous raw vegan creator. I think one of the questions that was asked to them was like, well, I live in like a rural American town, you know, it's hard to be vegan here, blah, blah, blah. And this person <laughs> would respond and be like, well, why don't you just move? Move to Thailand, there's so many fruits here. Why don't you just get out of your cold climate? If you live in a cold climate, just move somewhere where you can eat fruit all day long instead of living in a cold climate. It's like, what, we're all just gonna move to Thailand? Like, that's your solution? We're all gonna move to Thailand? Do you know how small Thailand is as a country? We're all gonna live where it's tropical and warm? How's that gonna work? How's that gonna work? So it's just unreasonable, so out of touch, Anyway, have I made my point clear? <laughs> you guys, have I made my point clear? And also, I just feel like, why would you eliminate delicious things such as rice, such as tofu? I don't think tofu is raw, is it? I don't think so. Mm. Mm. Like, why would you want to not eat, like voluntarily not eat rice? Voluntarily not eat pasta. Voluntarily not eat noodles. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. Variety is the spice of life. Mm-hmm. I don't think you understand how good this is, guys. This dish alone is a reason to never be raw vegan. I did it again. A raw foodist, not raw vegan. This dish alone is one reason to never be a raw foodist. This is my last bite. Cheers. Mm. You guys, I finished half of this sushi bake. This was supposed to be four servings. <laughs> so I ate two servings. Yay, not too bad. Honestly, I could probably keep going, but I am getting quite full, so I will stop here. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down below your thoughts on any of the things I discussed today. Do you think I am being too harsh? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I'm being too harsh? Do you think I'm being mean? Do you think I'm being judgmental? What do you think? Let me know. I've been told that I have very strong opinions. Do you think my opinions are a little too strong? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And if you haven't already, guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We're gonna do mukbang videos more frequently. I promise, I promise, okay. And um, if you like mukbang videos, I have an entire playlist. So I'll link that playlist down below of all of my vegan mukbang videos so you can go and watch my previous ones. And if you have any ideas for the next mukbang in terms of what food you want me to eat or the topic of discussion, let me know. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Watching, guys and I'll see you in my next video bye